Hi and welcome everybody to the NMS Prime channel. NMS Prime is a network management system which helps operators to provision DOCSIS, fiber, cable and also Wi-Fi and other technologies. Today I'm with Ole Ernst, our CTO, and today we will speak about FTDH provisioning. We've done a couple of videos about FTDH uh, in the past before, but I think it's time to make a new video and give everybody an update of where we are with different FTDH vendors and also different types of FTDH technology. So Ole, I think Initially, a couple of years ago, our initial approach was that we said we like the OLT to be, sorry for the word to call it as stupid as possible. So that actually means that we say every customer has the same speed, like maximum speed provisioning. And then in the background, we are doing the speed provisioning via radios. And this is directly interconnected um, with the NMS Prime system. And I think a lot of our customers are still working with this approach. And I think it's a, a pretty cool and, uh, and solid approach. But why are some of our customers unhappy with this approach and are moving to a different step? And what is the different step and what is happening in this space? So I think that's something that we need to highlight first and really nail this down to all the details that everybody's understanding. Uh, what is this about? Yeah, so basically, as you said, we're using radios, but in the end, it's a BNG really who is doing the uh, speed limiting. So as you said, we with this stupid or dumb um, OLT, we basically just get a layer two um, channel. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it's maximum speed. The issue is in the downlink, it's not a problem because the BNG is on the very top and it's limiting the speed uh, up there. So if too, mu too much data rate per second uh, would be coming in, it would be shaped right there. The problem is more on the upstream side of things, because uh, when it comes to upstream, um, the and if, if the user is not behaving well, um, the user can saturate the link not un not just until the OLT, but he could even um, saturate it until the BNG. So depending on where the BNG is located uh, with respect to the OLT, this is, this is the issue possibly. And that's why some of our customers say, okay, um, this is one of the drawbacks. Another one is that you cannot have guaranteed bandwidths. So let's say you have a, a customer, like a business customer who wants for absolutely sure, let's say 100 meg megabit, and you have many uh, customers on the same fiber. And then um, if the other customers are using also a lot of bandwidth, it may happen that this 100 megabit can't be guaranteed anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. And that's why some of our customers say, okay, um, let's, you know, create a, a plugin just for this OLT where we can f in a very fine grained manner on the on the CLI basically uh, configure all the options needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what we call an NMS Prime vendor plugins. And we have supported a couple of vendors already. Maybe Uli, you can just go ahead and show one of the slides where we have a bunch of uh, plugins already in there. And um, yeah, that's right. So maybe you can just speak a little bit about the OLT vendors and then later I like to highlight a little bit the difference between DOCSIS and FTDH. But uh, yeah, let's let's put yeah. out a few names which we are working with. Yeah, I think it all started with ZTE. Um, I think um, this is one one OLT we got a couple of years ago. And there we have to use uh, the CLI to configure the, the ONTs because whenever, every time an ONT is coming up, you need to um, yeah, fire up some commands to get the, the ONT running. Uh, then I think we moved over to Cycle. Uh, in, in this case, it's, it's quite simple because they have default profiles, which you can just use and every ONT coming up will be provisioned with this profile. And so there, there's actually not much to do on our side, which is pretty good. Uh, then um, for the smart meter market, uh, we were using uh, a lot of Huawei gear. So the Huawei uh, OLTs. In this case, we are using SNMP traps to get to know when an ONT is coming up. And then we uh, also fire some commands on the CLI to get it up and running. Uh, lately, we worked with Nokia and Calyx. Um, Nokia with their new Altiplano. Um, platform 25G platform, no? 25G, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, there uh, we are implementing their intent-based API, and we also get uh, metrics from their, um, yeah, from their Open TSDB. Um, so it's quite tightly integrated, and also with Calyx, obviously, um, pretty big in the tier two, tier three market, uh, which we are, of course, also are in. So it's a good um, combination, and yeah, we're also looking into uh, since you know our DNA is open source. Uh, we look into Volta, which is an open source system to, yeah, basically to summarize many different OLT vendors into one 
you know, functionality or to and abstract it with this one. And so we're having also having a look right now into it. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the vendors we work with so far. Mm -hmm. I think to highlight the difference, uh, maybe again, and it's great that you shared so much detail about how to work with these different vendors. Um, I think to highlight the difference also to the cable world, since we are coming from the cable world. So in, in cable, uh, the Cable Labs organization is doing a great job in standardizing, standardizing all the different types of how to provision a CCAP, how to provision a modem, how is the overall process looks like. But in the fiber space, it's all like everybody is cooking his own um, yeah, soup. And so we have a lot of different ways how we integrate with operators, right? And that's also what we see that our customers are doing. And like bigger operators, of course, they don't typically don't like to have um, just a vendor login that they say we can just work with one of the logos or with other logos. But they often like to work at least with two or three. And then, of course, products are progressing and getting to newer and newer versions and newer, newer stuff is coming. So then it often didn't take long until they have like a bunch of OLTs and a bunch of ONUs and there is not really intercompatibility between these um, vendors. So it becomes more and more complicated and then typically some of the vendors come with their own provisioning, then they have another monitoring and this is like, it gets so complicated. And I think the idea that we had is coming from the Doxa space where Cable Labs is doing a great job um, here that we are trying to abstract a lot of these uh, complexities into NMS Prime. And that's where we introduced like a separate layer under our provisioning hood with all the open source tools that uh, we discussed a couple of times on this podcast um, that we say we can just connect them directly and then it's like, for every vendor individually, like you mentioned here, that for the one vendor, we have to fire literally CLI commands to them to get them up and running. And we know all, need to know all the indoor connections. On the other vendor, it's perhaps SNMP. So this is kind of where we call it vendor plugins because this is highly customizable. And typically we start with a yeah, customer use case where a customer is saying us, yeah, this is my list of devices that I need to support or that I have and want to migrate it. And then the team is working on putting them into our typical provisioning workflow. So that's like um, the way we are approaching it. So basically and you really have both both ways, right? You sure. can either go to the generic approach like we always start in the beginning. And if it's sufficient for you, if you and if you can work with the pos possible drawbacks, then mm -hmm. we can basically integrate everything right away. On the other side, if you want to have special uh, options, and of course we, we can provide uh, vendor plugins, but of course this mm -hmm. is usually on a project basis. Yeah, sure. And I think Ole, you prepared already a couple of um, yeah, live systems or demo systems that you like to show us. So maybe you can go over them and give us a glance about how the provisioning process uh, looks in detail in NMS Prime. So, Yeah, I will mostly concentrate here on the demo system, uh, which you can access yourself. It's on demo.nmsprime.com. Demo uh, you can also see it. Uh, we have a link on our webpage, nmsprime.com. And uh, this is basically our dashboard here when you first log in. And so you can see we have multiple net gateways here. Uh, and they, we call them net gateways. We used to call them CMTS since we came from the Doxus world. But since now we're talking also about um, FDDH and DSL and whatnot, um, we now call them net gateways. And one of them is uh, an OLT. For example, here we have the cycle we talked about. So basically, you create this. Uh, then you also, in this case, we also have a BNG here. Um, where we um, attached an IP pool for, and now whenever something is coming up and is properly authenticated, then it will receive an IP address from us. And based on the contract it is in, uh, we will limit the traffic and send the, the corresponding radius attributes to the BNG such that the BNG will be able to limit the traffic in both directions. Um, as you said, uh, we try to to abstract everything uh, as possible from the user. So here you can see um, all the config files which are provided in, the, in our demo system. Um, you can see, of course, there are Doxys um, files here. But uh, more importantly, what we're interested in today uh, is, of course, the TR69 ones, because TR69 is always, at least in our software, uh, if you want to do PPPoE, uh, you simply choose a TR69 uh, config file because this is interrelated here. I think here I just like to pause for a minute because we need, I think, a little bit more clarification. So there's a difference between OLT provisioning and ONU provisioning, or maybe can you clarify this in a second? So you talk about the config files, which is TR69 and deployed via ACS server. Yeah. Um, and how do this interrelate between what do I have to do on the OLT side of things and what is on the ONU side of things? Can you clarify so, that? So, a so bit? typically. 
um, you only have to set up the OLT once. Um, just do the general configuration. We also have some uh, configuration suggestions mm -hmm. uh, in case you want to bring it up. Um, and then you don't have to touch it usually anymore, especially when it comes to this Taxel, because we have these default profiles where you don't mm -hmm. have to do anything. Um, what I'm showing here is about the ONUs or the ONTs. So the ONT is coming up. Uh, the device behind it will do radios or PPPoE, and then it will get a layer layer free. We'll get an IP address, and based on top of this, now we want to configure the device. Like say, uh, I want to set up a phone number, or I want to set a Wi-Fi in a certain certain mm -hmm. way. And this is where um, our config files come into place, and this is we, where we use ACS mm -hmm. uh, TO69 um, to push um, parameters into the device, such that it will get all the services it wants. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, here we can see, for example, one of our devices which are live at the demo system uh, behind the Taxel. Uh, this is a German manufacturer, it's called AVM. Um, this is the Fritzbox. Let me just update this one really quick here. And here you can see basically we, we chose TR69 as a device type. And then you can see all the commands. If you're, if you're familiar with TR69, you may recognize the, the parameters here. For example, we talk about uh, voice profiles here, and you can see also we have a template engine built in here, so you don't have to, um, you know, for every device create a new uh, config file, but you can use variables as you can see here, for example, the PVP username or the phone number, zip domain, and stuff like this. And uh, when you create a modem, this provisions automatically or the variables are filled, and then this is pushed into Genie ACS, which is our ACS server. And next to this, or below this, you can also see that you can build your own interface. This is for the monitoring of the device. So we have a real-time dashboard on the modem, uh, which I can show you here. So this is basically data uh, which is retrieved via TR69. We usually um, configure the device in such a way that it should come every five minutes to our ACS server and should just say, hello, I'm, I'm still there. And then based on this, we ask the device for certain parameters. Mm -hmm. And here you can see all the parameters which are um, which we ask it for. And this, as I said, can be configured in the, in the config file. So if we look here, we have general device info. It starts with vendor, then we have device. If you look in the config file, it's exactly the same general device info, menu vendor, device, and so on. So you can vary in a very fine-grained manner. You can specify how your UI looks like, what kind of parameters you're interested in. And you know, for example, here we also have some signal quality figures, for example, the thresholds or the, the optical levels, mm. both in downstream and upstream. You can see the system log, and also down below, you can see how it changed over time. Um, again, we are using Grafana and Timescale DB here um, to push the metrics into our data lake and then display it. And of course, you can zoom in, zoom out uh, as you wish. Well, if you are authorized, let me just refresh this page. But you, you, you saw kind of the, mm -hmm. the metrics. Right, so this is kind of in our demo system. Of course, you can also look at the config file here, which is basically the template, and then um, replace with the variables. And you can see, you can set up Wi-Fi, you can change the LAN settings. You can also see all the, the replies from the, from the radio server. So here you have all the basically the metrics we sent to the BNG and here you can see that we have 100 megabits in um, down and upstream direction. Mm -hmm. I think this is um, so much for the demo system. Um, we could briefly talk about Altiplano. Mm -hmm. um, sure, let's talk about it. Again, uh, as, as I said, this is um, abstracted via our config file. Um, so here we have two different uh, devices running behind Altiplano. Uh, one is just a bridged modem. Another one is a proper gateway with routing functionality. And what's with Altiplano, there are the so-called intents, which I already talked about. And there are multiple versions of, of intents, depending on what kind of uh, devices you have, or you know if you played around a little bit and changed something, uh, then a new version is created. And every version possibly needs different parameters. And since we didn't want to hard code this, and it's every or every customer it's different, uh, we actually enabled this that you can specify this in the config file. So in this regard, you're very flexible. And of course, next to this, we have our regular TR69 um, parameters. So this is for the bridge. This is for the residential gateway. You can, you can see it's obviously much more uh, info in here. And in the end, what you do is creating such a modem with Aldiplano is just, you know, as usual, 
click plus on the modem. The only thing different here is that you also need to choose a, a fiber name. Uh, the fiber name is a property of the various OLTs. Mm -hmm. this, we will treat this automatically via Altiplano. And then we, in this case, you have to specify the, the OLT uh, the mm -hmm. OLT is connected to. And in the end, um, since I just created the modem, you can see these are metrics we retrieve via the OpenTSDB. Um, in this case, it's all zeros because the device was just created, mm -hmm. but this is basically how it would look like and what kind of information we got from, uh, from the IDPlano mm -hmm. uh, database and API. I got it. And then on a high level, what we are actually doing is that these information are directly connected to the IDPlano API and you're interfering with it, right? So it's not something that you send directly to the modem or can you talk a little right, bit about exactly. that? So IDPlano is, is a big, quite a big system. It's all, um, as far as I know, running Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. and they have kind of an API server and you connect with the API server and then you send your intent. Basically, mm -hmm. you say, I want to create a, a device or I want to create a L2 user, mm -hmm. which is the layer two, um, basically functionality. And so you send it there and then everything is trickling down. Yeah. It's actually quite transparent to the to us. So we don't actually know what's happening in the background, mm -hmm. but in the end, we just get a, the you know the message back that everything proof, worked uh, or mm -hmm. not and then hopefully the device is mm -hmm. up and running yeah. yeah and yeah can you share a little bit the difference about like other plugins where you say like for example we have to directly connect with cli can you just give a high level view about that yeah this is for example in the huawei case mm -hmm. um there we have an SN we we get to know when an ont is coming up via snmp traps mm -hmm. so the device the olt is sending us a trap that a new ont is coming up and then uh, we listen on to this. We, we need to evaluate the trap because in there, there are some information we need for provisioning. And then we connect via SSH. We have some expect scripts, uh, which are basically interacting with the device and expecting some answers and then pushing some new info into it. So it's kind of an interactive way, mm -hmm. uh, automated interactive way, if you, if you will. And this way we fire up the commands such that the ONT can go online. Yeah, which kind of inf uh, commands do you setting at the ONT? Is it like speed provisioning or these types of yes, which which port is connected and these these type of things? Correct. You need to know mm -hmm. the port, um, the the serial number of the ONT, mm -hmm. um, as you said, speed for example. So there are, or VLANs if you need VLANs for example. Mm -hmm. Every customer is a little bit different. So we have um, ve vendor um, flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, so every customer has its own flavor, mm -hmm. and this way we don't have to. You know, mess with the code all the time, but we have this abstracted. So basically, you only have one config file where everything is uh, defined, and then um, you know, our system adjusts to it. Yeah. Well. All right. Is there anything else, Ulla, that you like to show? No, I think that's that's mostly it. Um, as I said, um, it's quite abstracted, and as I said, we can most of the time we can work with the generic approach and if the customer really needs some some special cases when we are happy to to work with, with them together often the customer may already know what kind of um, options need to be set and then we happily implement this accordingly um, but yeah um, we are happy with both ways uh, and true mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's always depends on the customer's wishes, right? And maybe that's important to add, like typically this is like a, a project business that we are doing with the customer that the customer says, yeah, this and these and these vendors we need to support. And then we give an estimate of how much effort it is to integrate them in our approach into NMS Prime. And then, um, yeah, when we have the green light, we start developing and integrating these stuff. And uh, many of these devices, many of the vendors we have already integrated. So if you're interested in seeing, um, yeah, your devices, how far, or how many we have integrated already then feel free to send us a comment or reach out to us you will find all the information below in our uh, yeah box info box below the video and yeah i think it was really interesting um, it's a lot of complexity that we are abstracting but it's definitely a tough work and i think it's something that many many operators need and it's a cool feature and since everywhere around the world everything is moving towards fdh with different success stories um, it's definitely a very important module to have yeah i think that's it so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe our channel and if you like the content give a thumbs up and see you in our next video thank you Ola. goodbye